real easy to look at. But I hoped I'd never see her again. <laughs> like that's classic Harold Burl nineteen forties dialogue there, and I like it, and it's effective. And setting it in this time period is interesting as well, because the mm-hmm. later these films get, the more recent they get. You know, because you know, in, in the sixties they were like, okay, this is feudal Japan and samurais. Then it was, and later in the sixties it was cowboys in the Wild West and the Civil War era. And then now in the nineties they're making one about nineteen twenties prohibition. So I guess yeah. if they ever remake it again, what do you think it'd be like the sixties or the seventies? <laughs> uh, I think it'll take place at Woodstock. Right, that's an excellent point. <laughs> um, I, uh, I I thought that the scenario and the the scenery and the the placement of it in prohibition worked really well for the transition of the story. Um, you know, because that that is it's, while they're not it's not a western. You know, there's guns and stuff like this, but. Also, it didn't work for me because I'm not much for shoot 'em up, and there's a lot of shoot 'em up in this movie. Mm-hmm. You know, like I don't like a lot of movies with a lot of guns. Like guns are okay, and you know when it's stylized when you're dealing with like the Terminator or something like this, I don't really have a problem with it. But you know when it's gang related stuff like this, I don't know. I just I don't really enjoy it. It's a little too visceral for you. Yeah, I don't know. What well, do you, you like what the you Godfather, about- right? And there's. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. So, but but it's not really about is... that. Yeah, I mean, there's a couple of there's some there's probably two or three real brutal shootouts in The Godfather, but it's not really a shootout. It's more of a hit. <laughs> you yes. know, it's like there's not got gunplay going on. People diving behind. There was some really odd, over the top gunplay in this. I will say, especially like the when first he's with time. the prostitute. Oh like, yeah, that's, that's weird. Naked. Like the fact that they yeah. missed him is really <laughs> weird. Like that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Well, there's that. Like, that's and even worse the, than stormtroopers. <laughs> even the first time he shows up, uh, when the guys you know mess up his car, yeah. and he goes to confront him, like he shoots that first guy, and then he like gets blown out the door like in slow motion. Yeah, and, like, that we was cut really away, strange. And we cut back, and he's still flying backward. I was like, that's it's interesting. This is, and then you know, there's a little bit of style, but I, I think that's their attempt at having some style to the movie because other than other than that, those kind of weird flourishes, it's kind of flat. You know, I think we yeah. talked about a lot with the uh, the uh, 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 the dollars trilogy, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Every it's kind of like those... a, they're, they're trying I... to put some style, but it's like it's like putting lipstick on a pig. Well, <laughs> well, it's like in the dollars trilogy, though. There's always some kind of creative thing, like oh wow, that's cool, they did that. Oh well, that's you know that kind of. There was really nothing here, and this is made thirty years later. You know, mm-hmm. so you think there'd be more, and yeah, there's something more um, classy about an old gunfight in the old west, you know, as opposed to these guys. I mean, he's it is kind of weird to see a guy in the 1920s have like the double pistols. Yeah, that was a little weird to me. Like I hadn't, I don't know if I'd seen that in that time period before. Of course, I'm sure that happened, but everybody else has like Tommy guns, and and he has like you know the double fist and the, <laughs> these these pistols blowing people away. So do you think he was a little too indestructible then? Um, not that he was indestructible, it's just that they kept missing, and it was just weird, you know? I don't know, like, it's... The older I get, the more that those kind of crazy gun battles bother me, where they're just constantly getting missed. So when I was younger, I guess I didn't really care as much, but now that I'm a little older, I'm like, yeah, that's just... I don't know, that's just kind of ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, and then... Do you feel like the, uh... The villain's real lacking here? Because they... They build up Christopher Walken's character a lot, right? And he—I don't think he lived up. Like I like Christopher Walken, and he was right. fine in this role. But yeah, the way they built him up and how ugly he was, like, I don't know. I expected more makeup or something. Well, I expected more. Period. Like he has a couple scenes, and then he has the whole like wouldn't shoot an unarmed man in the back, right? And that—that's what they bring back again to the end, because um, obviously that's that's his. I guess that's his thing. He goes and shoots people up, throws his gun down. Acts like he's leaving and then kills whoever's left. I guess that's his style, right? Yeah. But yeah, like I'm like, oh wow, Chris Rockins in this. Oh, he's not in it yet. Oh, they're building up to him, right? And it's not like we didn't we didn't get Marlon Brando in Apocalypse Now build up <laughs> to this guy. It was the payoff wasn't that great? Because he, uh, I I thought there'd be more of a rivalry, you know. But 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 this is very similar to this. Is what I'm saying I think this one is beat for beat more like Yojimbo than even uh, for um, Fistful of Dollars. Yes, because, absolutely. Because like the Chris Rockin guy is the guy with the revolver or whatever in Yojimbo, the guy with the gun, mm-hmm. um, for example. And then like just the way they confront people, burn houses down, and shoot people, or, or as yeah, it's all like I'd say uh, a fistful of dollars is like seventy seventy five percent like Yojimbo. This is like ninety percent <laughs> like yeah. Yojimbo, right? 
And having it that close, again, I don't know. I don't know if we're going to have this trouble when we do remakes. Because, you know, something like The Thing. Like, if we ever get to The Thing, Carpenter's Thing is very different from the original thing from another world. Like, it's very, very, very different. And this is very similar to the original. Mm -hmm. And I almost don't like that because it just makes me think of how good the original was when I'm watching it. You know, and maybe had I not been watching these so close together, I might not be thinking of the original so much. Mm -hmm. But I almost prefer remakes when they are very different from their source material. Yeah, it's a, it's it's a tough line to walk, right? Because the the characters are all different, the environment's all different, the time period's all different, but, but the story's the, the same. story's beat for beat the same, right? Uh, like Pet Cemetery, when we did the remake for Pet Cemetery, like Pet Cemetery, the remake was very different from the original, mm -hmm. and I liked that. I thought that was good. Well, I don't know. Have we covered any other remakes up until now? Like other than this series of films, I think Pet Cemetery is the only one. Hmm. We'd have to look back at our... Just thing. trying to think now, what have we, what have we done on this show? Right? You know, I, I'm pretty sure that's it, because we did Godfather, Jaws, Mission Impossible, Toy Story, Terminator, and this, right? Yeah. So yeah. I think that this is the second set of remakes that we've done, and I definitely prefer remakes when they're very different from the original. Well, okay, well, we have covered Halloween, right, in a different form. Uh, yes. For Halloween H4O over on the, the Top Film Society, which is yep. currently in our feed as well. For and easy listening. <laughs> I, while I enjoyed Halloween the first time I saw it, and it is very different, I I didn't enjoy the Rob Zombie remake as much the second time going through them all together for a completely different reason in that it was very jarring after all the fun that we had been having with, with Halloween Resurrection and Halloween mm -hmm. H2O. We really enjoyed them because they were fun. To then jump into Rob Zombie's Halloween while watching it in that order was very jarring because it was such a different experience and it was well, very violent in a different way. Well, I I think it, that one's really unique. And I, and I like Rob Zombie's Halloween for being so different. Yeah. But that's weird because it's so different and then it's so exactly the same. <laughs> it's just like, it's like they condensed the first movie into like the last act of their movie. Uh, yeah. So that's a weird one, but but I think that's that's a good. I'm not going to say that's one of the greatest remakes of all time, but I, I will say that that is a, a good way to do it if you're going to do remakes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't think anyone would know this is. I mean, yet we know, right? Because we're tuned into this right now. But like, if you if I if a random person in 1996, right, if they go to see this in the theater, they wouldn't be like, oh, it's Joe Jimbo. Like, like they would yeah. know it was in, they, they. You might see some similar themes and be like, you know what? It's kind of a rip off of this other story, but like, it's weird for it to be so similar. But so different, but then having them intentionally, like, I mean, Akira Kurosawa gets story credit on this, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> I, mean, I guess they wanted to cover their bases because they saw what happened last time <laughs> with a, for a fistful of dollars where there's all this legal action uh, about using their story without the permission. But, uh, yeah, uh, you know, I think, though, taking all the comparisons away, I think on its own merits, this is this is a fine movie. You right. Know? Like, it's, I, I was actually surprised by some of the brutality in it, you know? Uh, honestly, like when the when the 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 second girl that that Bruce Willis uh, sends out of town, he is <laughs> that's the solution to problems. Just mm -hmm. I'm gonna get you in a bus. I'm gonna send you out of town. <laughs> right? That's what yeah. he does multiple times. And uh, her ear had been cut off. I'm like holy hell! <laughs> like that was that was I didn't expect that. Mm -hmm. So uh, they did it to uh, stuck in the middle with you. Okay, did they? <laughs> yeah, it's a Reservoir Dog dogs joke. Very good. I haven't seen that. What? Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness! <sighs> Is that Quentin Tarantino? <laughs> yeah. No, I. <laughs> Do you even like movies, Zach? You Do haven't you? seen Die Hard, Brandon. I know I haven't, but I, I haven't you. either. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know if you remembered. I hadn't seen that or not. Well, so, do you want to um, rate this thing? Do you want to rate this movie or what? Yeah. So yeah, any, I guess any final thoughts? Then I. Uh, I enjoyed it. I I just think it needed more style. I yeah. think. Uh, I mean, the man with no name is supposed to be kind of a silent character, but Bruce Willis says narration. Yeah. So that is a different wrinkle, and that does add that film noir aspect. I think that was this all the film noir stuff was the strongest aspects of it. I think. I agree. Um, and so that was a wise choice to incorporate that element into the story. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, you know, I was just surprised. 
that they didn't have a showdown in the old western town. I thought that's what we were building toward. And, and apparently, originally, that's what they were going to do. So, But that makes sense that when they went and reshot it, they went out in the middle of the desert mm-hmm. <laughs> because it's cheaper <laughs> than having to use these sets. Uh, that makes a lot of sense to me. Um, and yeah, Oh, I got, I got a shout-out. They mentioned Houston, the uh, the sheriff, when he's going to go retire. Uh, Bruce Dern, by the way, who is Laura Dern's father. Mm-hmm. Uh, both of them are actors very accomplished actors than both but uh he's gonna go retire and go to houston he gives a little cap tip uh, when they drive off and i'm like all right h-town represent so That's love it from. when houston is mentioned or seen in films like an independence day where there's a big sign that says houston and the aliens blow it up and the theater like yeah but should we be <laughs> cheering we live here probably not but uh yeah i mean there's really not much else to say about it. It, it is kind of repetitive like again like bruce like i said bruce will does the same like he you know he gets with a, the the first woman and then sends her out of town for safety and and on a bus and then Gets with the other guy's girlfriend and sends her out of town for safety on a bus. And mm-hmm. the the back, I didn't quite get the back and forth as much here as I like play them against each other. Like I yeah, know he was doing it, but yeah, it wasn't done quite the same. There's a few, and there was a few other things that weren't done quite as well as the previous movies. Like the, you know, and yet uh, Yojimbo when he goes and he tells them ahead of time before he attacks them, he says, "Oh, you better go because somebody's destroyed this place and killed all your men." Mm-hmm. It's it's done better when he gives the warning and then goes in and kills them. And then has to do it because he's already made Told that them. promise. And yeah. this one, he <laughs> killed them and just stayed out there. And so that was also done better in, in Yojimbo. But I don't know. The movie's fine. I didn't hate it. It was it was fine. I mean, I'm not going to watch this probably ever again in my life. <laughs> no. Right? But I'll watch Yojimbo for sure. Agreed. Agreed. So, Brandon, I have a question for you. How many money exchanges did we have in this film? I, I can't remember. I forget. I think it's like six, isn't it? There are quite a bit. So yeah. I counted nine money oh, exchanges goodness. in this film. And this might be the one with the most, actually. I think it is, yeah. Um, I first, lost count. The first is when uh, Smith, John Smith, uh, pays the barkeep. Uh, the second is when uh, John Smith pays Wanda, the prostitute. Third is when uh, John Smith pays the sheriff. Fourth is when John Smith uh, pays the mechanic, uh, fix his car. Uh, the fifth is when Doyle pays John Smith for his services. Uh, the sixth is when uh, John Smith pays Lucy, uh, the uh, girlfriend of one of the rival uh, gang brothers. Or cousins. I guess the Italian guys were cousins, I think. Mm-hmm. The seventh is when uh, Doyle pays Smith again uh, for his services. Uh, the eighth is when uh, uh, Smith gives, uh, gives Felina all of his money uh, so she can escape back to Mexico. And the ninth is when Smith pays the mechanic to fix his car. So That's a lot. That all sound right to you? <laughs> I, I buy it. I totally buy it. <laughs> so that, that brings us nine total for this film. And the, the grand total for the Man With No Name franchise of money exchanges is 34. I think that's the highest count that we've had so far. I got to say, but, okay, I remember when we when I had to pick something, you know, because it's like my one of my functions here on this podcast is to pick something for us to count. I was like, God, I don't know. What should I pick? I don't know. There, people are changing money. Let's do that. I had no idea <laughs> that it was going to be so prevalent, especially in this last film. So so I picked right is what I'm saying. So yeah, <laughs> for I, think the category. <laughs> I, I appreciate your choice in money. Thank you. In money changing hands. So good job so what would you rate this uh film you know it's 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 above average you know uh it's not a waste of two hours but as you said i probably wouldn't ever watch it again so i i give it a three out of five three out of five dollars for this film for me what about you brandon i agree i gave it three yeah it's very fine good very good <laughs> so uh brandon i have to ask you is this franchise fatigued oh dear lord yes <laughs> you don't want to see so the, done. the further adventures of bruce willis uh, going to mexico I, for his business no i am so done with this even this franchise like i'm done this this is a weird one and this is my fault this is my choice but i'm done with this series of movies so i don't think it's a weird one i, I mean it's kind of refreshing to do such radically different films you know yes. as opposed to doing all right here we are 
That's one way to look at With it. Mission Impossible Six. Although I loved Mission Impossible Six. <laughs> you know, so, uh, but but I, I I see your point. It, it's it's a different approach. Like I didn't really realize it's only a second remake we have done. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we'll do more remakes, obviously, as time goes on. But yeah, uh, well, I'll, I guess you'd call it the third. 